Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Kyle Report wherever you get your podcast. You're watching on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You can find us there as part of Empire Media. That's A M P I R E. Always much appreciated when you tune in. Don't forget, you can read my work on ESPN.com. I have a story up now about the commander's free agency, kind of wrapping up and laying out what their plan, kind of going, I didn't say inside their plan, but just like, what is it they valued most in free agency? And what is it that they set themselves up to do in the future? Just kind of analyzing that, but that's up on ESPN.com right now. So today I'm going to analyze what I, the guy I consider their most impactful signing, that's linebacker Frankie Louvu. Now, before I get to that, just a couple little nuggets here. So the owners meetings are next week in Orlando. So I'm going to be down there Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. We're going to talk to Dan Quinn. We're going to talk to Adam Peters, hoping to talk to Josh Harris. It's the first time we've had a chance to talk to anybody since free agency. As you know, they made a lot of moves. So I'm curious where they feel they're at um, and just get an update on the search for the quarterback. Now they're not going to tell us who they're going to take. And, and again, at this point, I don't think they fully know. And I keep telling people that this is a group that wants to go through a process. They do not need to make up their minds right now. The only thing that would be good to know is if you didn't like any of these guys, and then we were going to try and move back, there's clearly some time to do that as well. This is not a group that's going to, like they may, they're certainly going to like somebody, the tape. They're going to like what they see on the tape and they're going to be able to analyze that. But this is they're going to want to get to know some of these guys first. So until you really see them at the pro days and until you have them in for a visit, it's really hard to get to, to fully settle on a guy you know, when you're choosing between a, cu a couple guys. So and they may know they may have a, a, a good feel. But my guess is and my sense is that they haven't settled on somebody yet. And nor should they. They don't have to. So go through the process, et cetera. But we'll get some updates on. All that stuff from Orlando, we'll obviously be talking to other coaches around the league and just getting their thoughts on some things. And I'll share that with you when, when, when this is all done next week. So anyway, just a little update on that. And then also on Thursday, they signed cornerback James Pierre, who, um, you know, is a special teams guy and, and veteran backup depth. That's what he is. So he, um, that's, that's what he's been in his career and, and, that's what he'll be in Washington. So again, just more depth. And they still, to me, they still, and I've said this before, they still need to go out and get another corner guy. That's that, you know, is going to definitely be a starter. Um, I would personally, I would want to get one in the draft and just get a guy that maybe can come in and help you immediately and be one of your top four or five guys. So anyway, I, will they do that? We'll see, but that's, those are certainly going to be some of the questions that we ask. They're not going to tell us, but I, but I think you can certainly see that there are going to be there's still some questions about that position. So um, that's what's going on. Let's get to Frankie Lube. And by the way, I'm going to give you more and more and more on the quarterback as we quarterbacks as we get closer because I've talked I've spent a lot of time over these last few weeks talking to people, getting various opinions on Daniels or May, or would you trade back and get a JJ McCarthy? And, and I'll start sharing with some of those with you guys, but I will say like, it's, you know, there's no consensus, but there, you know, there is a guy that I think people talk about a little bit more, but I want to hear from more people before I start going on about that. So anyway, let's get to Frankie Lou, because again, I think of their 20 some free agent signings to me, he's the most impactful guy. Now, Bobby Wagner can come in and be a very good leader, the kind of leader they haven't had in a while. But he's also not at that same point in his career. Louvre, they're getting a guy who's on the up. And I think he's a guy that can impact the pass rush, something they desperately need. With their, They don't have great pass rushing ends anymore. And, well, they didn't have him before, to be honest, because when Montez was here, he was starting to become a very good pass rusher. But the first few years, he was he was good. But he wasn't getting home enough. That was the big thing. Chase Young had one really good um, – good. he had a good rookie year but he wasn't getting home. And, you know, the, in, in reason, you know, he was not a great pass rusher after that injury certainly played a big, big, big role in that bottom line is they did not have great pass rushers. They had good ends, but not great pass rushers enough to like, to just be those dominant guys. Now Montez had a great year. And so he became that guy and yes, it would have been nice to keep him, but they didn't. So we move on. Now we're here. 
So, but that's why it's important to get guys who can do what a guy like Frankie Louvu does and the versatility he gives them. Just as one point of note, I watched every pass rush this guy had, every single one. And then I watched it pretty much all again, because then I broke it down, watch every pass rush he had. Then you watch every sack, watch every time, every um, pass, what's considered a pass rush win, what's considered a pass rush loss. Part of it is I want to see how people judge, put him in categories, but also because I want to see what happened when he won, what happened when he didn't win and just kind of break down. So basically I saw every pass rush he had probably about three times. Watched a lot of his run defense as well. I will say as a run defender, run defender, I thought he was fine. Um, I'll be curious to see how he does here playing behind these tackles. I think it'll help him. It will help a lot. Um, I wouldn't say he was a dynamic run defender, but I feel like there's certainly talent there to, to become a good one in coverage. A lot of what I saw, and I, this is something I'd want to study more later, but a lot of what I saw was him in zone felt like he seemed to have pretty good awareness. Um, but you know, again, He's here. What I want to talk about tonight is the pass rush ability, because I think that's where he can make an impact. And it gives this coaching staff some flexibility in how they want to use guys and how they want to use him in particular. And I think you can see some of the plan with Quinn, with Dan Quinn and Joe Witt with what they want from their defense. And I always call it Dan Quinn defense because this is the defense they're going to run. Now, Joe Witt's calling plays. Joe Witt's in charge of it. Eventually, it's going to become his defense. Right now, we're looking at because this is Dan Quinn is not bringing Joe Witt here to run anything other than what Dan Quinn wants to run. That's why he hired him. Not that he's not that he's going to be calling the shots, but it's just like if you're an offensive minded coach, you have a philosophy. You're going to hire a guy who follows through with what your belief is. So with this we're going to see. But um, anyway. With, with with what those guys want is some versatility. And you're going to get that with him. And I can think you can see it too in the defensive end signings. That's why they like Dorrance Armstrong. Armstrong can rush out. He's an edge defender, but he can also rush inside on some downs. Same thing with F.A. Abada. That was one of the things that the previous staff liked about him. And it's exactly what this staff would like about him as well. He can rush inside on, on some, you know, some obvious pass rush situations, but it gives you some flexibility to move guys, maybe drop a guy, at times and to create some more, some of the simulated pressures, but it also allows you then to maybe pair them on the edge with a guy like Luvu, just like what Dallas would do with a Micah Parsons. Not that Luvu is Micah Parsons, but he can be used in multiple, multiple ways that can help this de- team quite a bit. So let's get, you know, some of the things that stood out to me about him. And it's why I think that, you know, people should, first of all, the dude plays really hard. And it's funny because I texted somebody over at the facility, over with the commanders about him. It's like, this is, Jamin Davis always talks about he wants to play with his hair on fire. So it kind of became a little bit of a thing. Like Jamin would talk about that a lot as a rookie, especially. And then when Luvu was signed, he talked about playing with his hair on fire. So I texted somebody over at the commanders and they said he plays with his hair on fire. And when you watch him, that's, you can absolutely see why they would say that because that's how he plays. And he plays, He's an effort, effort, effort guy. That's for sure. An energy guy, without a doubt. And you see that show up time and again. And, you know, in the pass rush, he's, he definitely stays with it because of that. So a couple of things that stood out. Again, the versatility. They line him up. All the Carolina did a really good job. To me, did a good job with him. And I like their defense, what they did. Evero, their defense, who was a coordinator last year, did a really good job with them. And some of the pass rushes that you saw, I'm sure we're going to see some of that this year as well, just the way they move guys and slammed the line and created some chaos up front. And I think I even wrote, I had like, I took like seven or eight pages of notes on this guy. So the one of, one of the things I think I put down there was a chaos creator, because I think that's what he does very well in the middle is create chaos at times. So again, versatility stands out. He can be effective, um, rushing out of a stack formation. So lining up behind one of the defensive linemen, not everybody can do that. He does that. And he can run, he can rush off the edge. I saw him blitzing the A gaps. You know, he was, you know, depending on the, he's, he can line up inside and, and he's going to mug and drop and do a mug and go, whatever. So there, there are a lot of things. There are different ways that he's rushing out of a, just a traditional, you know, you got four, four down linemen and maybe in their nickel, four down linemen, two linebackers, four yards behind the ball, not sure you're going to go. And then he's going. So he did it from multiple ways, which I think adds to what this team will want to do with him as well. 
has good pass rush skills for a linebacker. He was a pass. He, he was a rush linebacker at Washington state his last year. And, you know, so I think those things, he, he certainly plays with some, he certainly has some good technique to use. And I was talking to a guy who coached defense in this league a long time. And I asked him about him. He said, he has the ability to dip and rip. He flips his hips very well. He can change speed to power. So those are all really good traits for pass rusher. And I would agree with that assessment. Not that, you know, not that you need my agreement for a guy versus a guy that, you know, who would, I know is coach defense for a long time, but that's, that's kind of what I saw. And so you pair him again with a guy like Armstrong or, you know, um, or even a Fowler or whether it's Obad or, or maybe somebody is a draft pick, you know, and then Cleveland Farrell is not necessarily a pass rusher. And so I, I don't always bring him up, but I think you can, you can do some things with him. And I also be curious to see if they, how they use Jeremy Chin along with him as well. So, and, you know, he has the ability to create speed rushes with the stuff and he's, he can rush his stunts were pretty good too. Um, I like that he was willing to give himself up on some of these stunts. And, and I bring that up. It's funny because I'm going there first a little bit because in part, because um, I just think that it's something he does well. I like when a guy is kind of selfless and you saw that, but one of the things I like that he did on his stunts is, you know, he would like, for example, there's one stunt I saw him, he's rushing into the left guard and so he he forces the guard to engage with him and ride him a little bit, and then he's going right at the left tackle's um, inside shoulder. So the guards engage and turn, and the tackle's now engaging, and it allows the end to slip around and create pressure. So you saw that a couple of times where he he understood his what he had to do was give himself up on a play, and he absolutely did so. And I like when guys do that because I just think it speaks a lot to their understanding of what makes good defense and giving yourself up sometimes is obviously very good defense if you want to create pressure. And so, you know, you saw him create sacks for others, physical, physical, saw him knock guards off their feet. So you saw this a couple of times and I'm talking offensive guards, but some of it is just, it's the physical play, but it's the ability to again, sink your hips and explode into a guy. And there's a lot of reasons for why he can be that physical, but that's part of it. I think when he starts to move forward, if he's coming from a stationary position, going to be a little bit hard to do that. But I think when he starts to move a little bit at the snap and create a little bit of momentum for himself, but he also does a really good job stunning them with his hand placement and getting, he's really good at getting his hands inside the chest. And some, you know, you saw him sometimes with pick a side of the, of the, of the blocker, you know, pick a side so you can kind of, get some, get them off balance a little bit. And, but I do, you see that ability to strike and sink the hips, but I also, and there, there was one time against new Orleans, for example, he's moving at the snap, um, moving at the snap and just right through the right guard stuns him. And I think it almost felt like the right guard was waiting for him to start to go around. So he takes a couple steps up field and just turns right into the guard. So the guard was not ready for this. And he just stunned him, sinks his hip, ex extends through, you know, explodes through the guy and gets the sack. Like that's just a really big time play to make. Um, you also saw against New Orleans, there was another play he had on that where it's a stunt, which I really like because he starts up field and takes two steps up field, gets the guard, the right guard engaged, and the line slants, the line is slanting to the left. So he's able to step up and go around, um, go around the guy. Um, because of that, like, but it's just really, it's really quick. And it was also it was quick, but also the ability to turn the edge and enough athleticism to do that. And he gets the sack on that one as well. Later, later in the year, I just gave you that play that he had against the, the Saints guard where he drew, knocks him back because it seemed like the guard stunned him. Well, there are other times where it looks like the guard is waiting for him to go right to engage him. And then he's going around him. So, you know, so he, he seemed to have the ability, he knows how to attack a guy. There seemed to be a plan that he's waiting and maybe setting some guys up, not just series to series, but game to game as well. And so I think you saw some of that too. Um, and, you know, um, he would fake, or he might fake to go around a guy and he's turning inside to him. So there's just different ways that he could win. And again, you like the, you like, you like the um, the ability to to vary it up a little bit, you know. You saw him you saw him use a rip move, 
saw him multiple times get into a guy's body and then slap the hands away. Again, more good pass rush skills and traits that I think are skills that he has. And just that, that helps because you, that's where you get into the lineman and you're going to stun them. And, you know, but if you can't, this is the speed to power. You can't get them off you, get the hands off you, then you're not going to win. But he was able to do that and he did it pretty well at times. So I think that was something that was good, you know, to see from a, a pass rusher, but he did that. So, you know, I, and then, I mean, that he's got the skills, man. And then it's not like he was winning every time. I mean, there's guys certainly stopped him. And sometimes like, for example, I, I gave you the examples of the guards. So there's one time where I saw him against one guard where the guard opens his, his, it's the right guard. So he opens his right leg a little bit, swings it open a little bit too much where well, he sees that and he gets him to the inside. So you take, you see that you take him to the inside, the guy's off balance. We saw that with Andrew Wiley a lot last year, he would open up too much and it creates an ability to get to the inside. And that's what you do. You know, the guard that didn't do that against him, Brandon Sheriff. So, and you know, I saw he went up against Brandon Sheriff and I, I'm watching him, watch him, see how's he going to do it? How's he going to do against Sheriff and how Sheriff going to react after watching these other guards? Well, the way Sheriff reacted is he stayed balanced and he, he was very patient and he didn't extend his arms first. So he beat, he stunned, he stopped him because of that. So he was really good patience and he didn't, he didn't go, he wasn't on the attack to get him. He just wait, waited and did that. And so I think Luvu does a good job. If you, I think what an offensive lineman has to do is keep him, make sure you can kind of keep him out of your body because he gets in there, he's going to stun you or he can get your hands off you. And so, you know, you'd see, again, you'd see some other guards or some other linemen who had success against him. It's not like he wasn't an all pro. He wasn't anything that, but there, and he's not going to win every time, but his success rate was pretty good. So, you know, but I think when you, when you stop, when, he, when there were times where he wasn't quite moving at the snap, when he wasn't, um, you know, I think some tackles could then stop him and just be better able to move with him. But I also, you know, I think he, I like his instincts. I think he has good instincts and you see that too. in other times, because there were times against, there was a couple of times against green Bay, for example, green Bay. Now this is a combination of instincts times things up very well, which comes back to instincts, but also a little bit of a misplay by green Bay's offensive line. But there was two times again, there were a couple of times where I saw the pass rush against green Bay, where they, you know, they take the receiver out wide, send him in motion. And then he turns back and goes back out. Right. So they did that early in the game and, and the guy goes out and boom, as soon as he gets to a certain point, ball snap. And they ran a similar motion in, in another, another point in the game, well, the motion starts to come inside and you see Luvu start to cr start to come. So he takes a couple steps up toward the line and then the guy, the receiver turns back out, Luvu goes back. And as soon as the receiver hits a certain spot, he starts coming and then the ball is snapped. Now the center botches the play because, you know, and I was talking to Logan Paulson about this and I like to run some stuff by him sometimes because he's very smart, a hundred times smarter than I am. But on this one, you know, you watch the, the you watch the action alignment where the center blocks who is right, takes the guy the guard thought he was supposed to block, which leaves an opening in the middle. And that was a play action pass. And um, the running back had no chance to get to him. And the only chance that Jordan Love would have had has would have been had he abandoned the fake. But really, it comes down to the center just botched it. But it also came back to, I think, Luvu's instincts and the timing of the snap was really good. So I think that was a, a very much a – obviously, it was, and he got the sack on the play, so it was a good play by him. And there were some errors, but you also say that was a really good job by him and timing it up very well. And I think he does a good job of staying after the play as well. So, for example, there's this play against, against Houston. And by the way, I know people would like to see videos of all this stuff. Not allowed to run them. I know other sites do. They really shouldn't. Um, but because I work for ESPN, we're not allowed to run any video with it. We can, you know, you, you're limited to how much you can run of that. And um, I'm not going to jeopardize anything for me or ESPN. But yes, I would like to run video. But I put some of the stills up here just to give you some example of what I'm showing. Anyway, so with, with um, the staying after, I think that's another really good trait that he has. I mean, you saw it a few times. You see it in the run game. You see it in the pass game as well.
he doesn't stop. And then you'd see it, but you really saw it sometimes in the pass rush game is too. So there's a play against Houston where he starts up, gets stopped by the guard and, and kind of backs to, to he's waiting for CJ Stroud to maybe throw it quick. So he backs up a little bit. CJ has to, doesn't do it. So then he keeps going around. CJ gets pushed here, pushed back here. And then, and then Luvu gets a sack, but it's because he continued to go after him. There's another time. This is another play that I really liked by him. So it's against Atlanta. He gets a blitz. And there's a couple of things that I really liked in this play. One. So he goes on the blitz and the running back comes over, fills the hole. So he steps slightly to the inside without really, there's no change of speed here, but he kind of angles just inside a little bit enough to get the back a little bit over here and he cuts back inside. So now he's attacking. So he's attacking the, the back's left shoulder, which is now open a little bit. So he's getting through him, grabs Desmond Ritter, but Ritter breaks through. Ritter sprints out all the way to his left, past the, between the hash mark and the numbers. And then Luvu gets knocked to the ground, gets up. I think he got knocked around. I, my, my memory on that one might be shady, but he gets, regardless, he he gets, you know, gets moved or gets the, I think he's around, gets up, sprints after him and he forces, and he gets, he basically, he hits Ritter as he throws. I mean, that was about a 20 yard run to get over there. So he hits him as he throws incomplete, but it was just, it's the, it's the sticking after it ability that or trait that i think is really good too and again that's why people talk about him bringing energy that's what energy is so that is again another really good play um and then i you know again i think he's pretty quick times it up well had one one rush where i think the ball was out in 2.13 seconds obviously very fast but he beat the center on that play and he was in the quarterback's face he did i think he caused an incomplete Oh, no, no, no. I'm taking this back. It was a perfect ball by Baker Mayfield. The, cor the corner fell down on the play, but it was a good ball by Mayfield. Um, and I think it may have been, it might have been complete anyways, even if the corner hadn't slipped. But what also jumped out to me was how quickly Luvu got through on that play. I'd go to get back against the center, creeps up right at the line, boom, gets in there. But a good rush, just the ball was out and a better play by the quarterback but it was a good rush by Luvu. So those are the reasons why, and those are examples, but also I was trying to show you some of the traits that I think make him, will make him a, a very good impact player against the, again, in the pass rush game. Now, what would be a good year for him? And he had what, six sacks last year. And I was talking to someone like someone else about this said, well, you know, if you're a really good pass rush linebacker, you're talking nine to 14 sacks. Can he get to that nine? I think he can um, and but again, he played for a good defense last year and a good defensive coordinator, and he's going to be doing that. He's going to be playing for good coach, defensive coaches here. But I also, and I also think playing behind those tackles, you can do some things with them. And I think you can do, I'll be curious to see what does it look like when they get the movement on the line that Dallas did with, with these coach, with um, Quinn in charge of that defense. So I think that's going to help him as well. So can you get to that level? I think he could, I definitely think he could get to that nine sack level. Um, and then, you know, tackles for loss. He had 13 last year, I believe. Can he get five or six more? Now you're having a really, really good year. If you get to that 18 to 20 range and is he capable of that? You know, we'll, we'll see. I think that one's going to be the, the, an interesting one because that obviously is include the run game too. So um, I think that's something that, well, I'd be curious to see how he is playing behind this, these defensive tackles and how much will, how much that will help him. And also playing with other guys like, like Bobby Wagner, Jamin Davis. I think Davis can be very effective in these roles as well. Davis did improve last year. And I think there's still more room for improvement. I think playing with these coaches, I think will help him a lot. So I think there's a, there's a reason to believe that this linebacker group will be more impactful than we've seen in recent years. So, but again, to me, it starts with Luvu. And when I talk to people here, I ask somebody here, who are, you know, the guys that they're most excited about signing? I think you'd have to say Luvu and probably Bobby Wagner because of Wagner's leadership and what he can add. But Luvu is just now tapping into what, who he could become. He's, he's only been a starter for really a couple of years. So he's really now just starting to ascend. That's why you, you may be getting a guy who's just now ready to become a really good player, possibly, especially in that particular role. As an all-around guy, I think let's see, I want to see more of him, but as a pass rusher, he definitely is going to be able to make an impact. And I'm I'm really as somebody who just likes to watch football, I'm really curious to see how he's used. And again, Carolina I felt like did a nice job with him. 
but I am curious to see how this group does with him and, and where he can take his game. So anyway, that's from me. I will be back on Monday. I'm going to actually be talking to Charles Leno. And a lot of what I'm going to be talking about is he's got scouting reports on, on these guys. Like he played against Doran Armstrong. He played against Cleveland Farrell. He played, you know, he knows about, you know, he knows offensive linemen. So he's, you know, the Allegretti's and, and Tyler Biotish and also Dante Fowler played against him. So, and he'll probably have some stuff about Luvu too. That's why I want to bring him on. We're not going to rehash like all the stuff that's happened here. I'm more curious about his assessment because I know he knows these guys and I know he knows how to analyze these guys. So that'll be out Monday. And then again, next week. And I, by the way, and I had, if you didn't hear my Herm Edwards interview on Jaden Daniels, go back and listen to that. It's really good insight. I am working on bringing on somebody to talk about Drake may as well, because, you know, talking about everybody here, folks, as much as I can. And those are the two main guys. So anyway, that's it for me. I'll be back on Monday. I'll talk to you next time.